goes on to say that they, they knew God but did not glorify him as God nor were thankful but became futile in their thoughts and their foolish hearts were dark and that's pretty strong language but it really gets the message across that atheists are futile in their thinking and I think chemical evolutionary theories are uh, the epitome of futileness but here's an example of the bias that you get from the, the people researching evolution See, a Kansas University professor, he said, even if all the data point to an intelligent designer, such a hypothesis is excluded from the science because it's not naturalistic. He's saying no matter what evidence he has, he's not going to believe in a designer because he's already ex excluded it without even looking at the evidence. He's already made up his mind there's no such thing as a designer because it's not scientific. And that's the exact opposite from what Paul says. And another... Um, scientist uh, who is somewhat skeptical of the origin of life ideas, uh, an information theorist called Hubert Jockey. He's not a creationist, but he said research on the origin of life is unique and that the conclusion's already been authoritatively accepted. And all we have to do is find out the scenarios and the mechanisms by which it happens. See, they've already made up their minds that life came from, from non-living chemicals before even looking at the evidence. All they're trying to do is try to find the chemical evidence to back up their belief system. But their, their conclusion's already there, that life somehow or other came from non-living chemicals. And uh, Yockey himself uh, said that contrary to the established and current wisdom, a scenario describing the genesis of life on Earth by chance, natural causes that can be accepted on the basis of fact and not faith has yet to be written. Now he wrote that uh, 25 years ago, but he hasn't changed his opinion since. He is still of the opinion uh, that there's no good theory of the origin of life from non-living chemicals. Therefore, this idea is accepted by a blind faith and not by real evidence. Now, it's interesting because the evolutionists want to say that we're the ones uh, who have blind faith and they're the ones who go by evidence, but in fact, it's the, the opposite is true. Because uh, it's very important to understand whenever you read an origin of life paper, they've already assumed that chemical evolution has happened. Well, it must have happened because we're here, aren't we? So you get the, get the idea there. We're here, therefore evolution must have happened to get us here. But how do we actually understand if something's been designed? I'd say that the, the living things um, shout that they've been designed. It's so obvious. But the thing is, we're made in the image of God, and part of our image of God is our creativity, and we make things. Now, how do we tell if something's been made? Well, for one thing, we look at this jet fighter here, and one thing about the jet fighter, it has oodles of correct components. The point is that a wing won't fly by itself, and neither will a tailplane fly by itself, and a cockpit won't fly by itself, and the jet engine won't fly by itself. And in fact, you look in our creation magazine, the, the current issue, it talks about how the Wright brothers um, designed the first airplane, but they actually made uh, a lot of studies on the way natural flies work, the birds, designed by God. And the Wright brothers were very committed Christians. They looked at the way God had designed birds and used that to design the first airplanes. The point about this is that the components have to be organized correctly. So not only do you have to have the correct components, but they must be organized correctly. And as we can uh, do a proper scientific experiment, you know, science is about things which are repeatable and observable in the present. Like if I tell you that uh, uh, water boils at 100 degrees, you don't have to take me on faith, do you? You just go and test it yourself. But, but uh, the idea that, say, a reptile turned into a bird 150 million years ago, well, I don't know how you're going to test that. Go back in time when the TARDIS or Star Trek uh, um, Enterprise. Not like